Hello everyone, it's Sam here from WrestleSphere. I hope you enjoy our interview with Eddie Edwards from Impact Wrestling. We talk about a lot of things, uh, sacrifice event that's just been, uh, the upcoming Rebellion pay-per-view, and what they're up to in LA over WrestleMania weekend. So enjoy. I think the first thing I'd like to ask you at the moment is, so if we're watching you on TV recently, you've got stuff going on with PCO, who the French-Canadian Frankenstein, a man who cannot be killed, uh, and, and many places have tried, and many people have tried. Uh, how are you finding this current, let's call it what it is, this feud with a former teammate of yours? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, PCO, he is he is one of a kind. You know, there's, there's no doubt about that. He is... He is a monster, and you know the the things that he does in and outside that ring is it's mind blowing, you know, for me. But to be able to, you know, to get to where we are, we started off as teammates, and you know things don't work out, and here we are going toe to toe. I'm continuously trying to end him, bury him in the desert, hit him with cars. I'm learning that he can't be killed, but you know, in due time, I have faith that that will happen. But you know what, I'm. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying being up PCL. He's a fun guy to beat up. So you're also still hanging out with Kenny King. So it's almost like the remnants of Honor No More still exist. So I want to know, was Honor No More a mistake? I don't think it was a mistake. You know, we just didn't accomplish the goal that we wanted, which in the end was going to be me winning the world title from Josh Alexander. You know, that didn't happen, but everything that led to that moment, we, we accomplished the goal by getting me that match. That was the goal. And I, you know, I'll take responsibility. I was the leader of the group. I dropped the ball. I didn't win that world title, but in no way was it a mistake. And then, you know, Things happen, people move on, and that's just how professional wrestling is. And I get that. But I would not, if I go back and do it again, I would. You know, this time I would just win that world title. I know what I would have to do differently. That's all. I think, though, because I've seen him do it before, do you not think Eddie Edwards is capable of winning the world title or even the X Division title without any help? I've seen you do it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think, you know, that's going to be my next goal, you know, add some more gold, do something different. You know, I'm, I'm confident. I know what I can do in the ring for without an more, it was more about, you know, it was a group of us, a group of friends, a group of like-minded individuals who have been, you know, screwed over by professional wrestling, you know, with those guys coming from ring of honor, the, the at the time defunct ring of honor who were just left out in the cold, got them into impact wrestling and you know it's it's no secret that i thought i was overlooked and a bit disrespected by the impact you know front office by not getting that world title shot against you know kenny omega or christian whoever it may be i i bled impact you know wrestling that was i i wanted to be i was the heart and soul of impact wrestling but you know you can only take that abuse for so long and things had to change and by bringing them in that forced things to change and gave me a different outlook on my professional wrestling career as a whole, as well as within impact wrestling. That's a good answer. You got me there. So impact is building to three events by my account at the moment. So first we've got sacrifice on the 24th, I believe if that's right. I'm looking forward to that. Um, be watching that again on impact plus uh, for you know, for those in the UK, you know, I just want to quickly you know let people know about that so we can watch that on YouTube. Uh, and you guys uh, a month or so ago teamed up with uh, Dayzen, I think that's how you pronounce it, isn't it? It's specifically in the UK, Canada, and places like that. So I want to ask you actually, what's it like now knowing Impact is just more accessible than it's ever been before? That that's a great thing. Yeah, that is great. Like you said, you know, for for a while there was issues where you know people would you know they want to watch Impact and some fans would say, oh, it's, you know, it's tough to find or we can't get it here or there. But, you know, at this point, like you said, we got the, you know, we're putting it up on YouTube. We have the zone. We have, you know, in the States, we have it, you know, on our pay-per-view on Impact Plus and all that. So the more accessible we are, the better it is not only for us, but for the fans, you know, for so long, I think, you know, we didn't have the fan base that we wanted because people weren't, it wasn't that easy to tune in and find it. But now mm -hmm. that we have whether it's fans who are coming back or whole new fans who just want to give impact a shot, you know, now they can tune in and see what we're all about and 
I'm confident that once they tune in, we will have them hooked and they'll be on, you know, they'll be a part of our fan base going forward. I was going to say, as a, as a fan in the UK, uh, I mean this fully from a fan point of view rather than a reporter point of view. Uh, so I'm breaking my own kayfabe for a moment. But it, it's it, the YouTube thing, the Impact Plus is a big deal for me because it means like YouTube's on everything. It's everything like smart TVs, iPads, phones. And I love that. So I love that the fact that I can start watching on my iPad or then go downstairs and start watching on the TV that, you know, and carry on from where I was because it's my YouTube account. So I think that is it is a massive plus. And I think a lot of fans, particularly in the UK, will will find yeah. that really beneficial and good value for money as well. But like I said, two events coming up. And, you know, the next one is the event in Los Angeles, um, in Multiverse United. Any Anything on the card for you as of yet? Yeah, I'm in an eight-man uh, tag match um, where PCL will be on the other side. So we'll be continuing that war. This will not be ending anytime soon. Uh, Sammy Callahan's involved as well. Uh, Kratos, Joe Henry. Um, I forget the other couple that are in there, but eight man tag match. So I will be on the card. I will be in LA. I'm looking forward to that. That those weekends, those shows are always uh, always something different. You know, we yes. get to have this, we get to have these matches. You know, last year I got to wrestle Ishii, which is a match that I wanted to happen, and I was able to do that at the Multiverse last year. So this year, there's a whole bunch of matches that will be happening. That you know couple of years ago people never thought it would happen so we get to you know check those off the bucket list and do something different and i'm looking forward to that looking forward to getting back to la and you know we're doing it in the building that pwg runs which is pwg mm. special place in my heart of course so it'll be nice to get back out there and, and do something out in la how are you going to handle being in the ring with first of all you've got pco to contend with which is hard enough on its own on any given day and then you've got sammy callahan and let's be honest you and him I've got a lot of history, so yeah, you know, my, my guard on earth. Yeah, my guard will be up. I need this to say. Maybe the guys on my team, the other guys, maybe they do most of the work. You know, I'll see how how I'll see how I feel that day. I'll see the mental state of PCO and Sammy at that point as well. I can imagine your wife isn't very happy about you stepping into the ring with both those guys <laughs> at the same time. You know, at this point, I think she expects you know <laughs> craziness. At this point, she gets it. Fair enough. She's been in the business herself uh, for a long time as well, I suppose. Um, so moving past LA, which obviously will have an awesome atmosphere, you know, me, me and the WrestleSphere guys, uh, we, we were going to go because we're in uh, LA that weekend as well, but we just weren't quick enough with tickets. Uh, uh, but, yeah. may, but maybe next year. Uh, but yeah. uh, when you come back to the UK, we'll be all over that, I assure you. So let's talk about Re Rebellion. Rebellion's the big pay-per-view. That's the big one now. Uh, with LA out of the way, that's the Impact's big premier pay-per-view coming up next. Can you give us any indication of what you might be doing on that card? You know, it's going to be one of those things, see where the cards fall, and see how, you know, Sacrifice plays out, see how WrestleVerse plays out, and kind of go from there. You know, um, like I said, this war with PCO, it's probably not ending anytime soon. Uh, you know, they announced it's Kenny King against PCO at Sacrifice. So, mm -hmm. um He'll be, you know, Kenny's always got my back, so he'll be doing that at Sacrifice. And we'll kind of see what happens. Regardless, I will be a part of that show. I'm looking forward to that. Like you said, Rebellion is the next big one. It's one of our biggest of the year. It's in Toronto, you know, our big return to Toronto, which is great. You know, we're slowly adding these international trips, which hopefully means that we will be returning to the U.K., Sometime soon, I you know I'm I have my fingers crossed. I'm hearing rumbling, so let's just hope and pray that that happens sometime soon. I remember I was sat in front of Josh Alexander a few weeks ago. Uh, I was talking to him face to face, and I couldn't get anything from him about that. So I'm glad that you've given me a bit of hope there. So thank you for that. Uh, I can't get anything from the champ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, so let's just talk about now. Put the honor no more. Stuff aside for a moment, let's go back to the Eddie Edwards from before that. Impact has been a home to you for a, a very long time. You've seen multiple eras of Impact Wrestling. You know, um, the, the company's had even name changes while, while, while you've been there. Um, let's, in, on, on a serious note, how is Impact as a home to you? Because it, it, like you said, you bleed Impact. This must be a very special company to you. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason, you know, I, I just re-signed again with Impact. And there's a reason that it has been my home for the past eight, almost nine years at this point. 
because, you know, as the, the front office has changed, as you said, you know, the regime has changed time and time again. But I can honestly say since day one where I stepped in the company, I've always been treated with respect and I've been given opportunities that I wouldn't be given elsewhere. And I've always enjoyed especially now enjoy the relationship between, you know, myself and everybody in the locker room and as well as the locker room relationship to the front office, to, to our creative people, to the people, the higher ups within Anthem, you know, they, they treat us well, they treat us with respect and there's this open door of communication, which is such a huge factor in wrestling where, you know, if I have an idea, if I want to try something different, I'm not, afraid to pitch it i'm not afraid to ask if we could do something different because you know we have that relationship where it is a back and forth and we all feed off each other we all work together which is so important at this point we're all moving towards that same goal and impact has always treated me great since the beginning and now you know i'm happy to call impact my home i've always been happy to call impact my home and you know I've made it known where I don't want to go anywhere else. That's not my goal. I want to help make impact succeed. I want to take impact to the next level. I want to be a part of the crew that takes impact to the next level. And that's always my goal. That's brilliant. Uh, I've said a few times to to Impact wrestlers when I when I've been talking to them that Impact is and and it it gets even it grows month upon month. It feels like Impact's really having it, a time in the sun at the moment. And, and I wonder sometimes because if it's wrestling's becoming a little bit more popular again, and uh, people are, are now going so like they might say they might watch some New Japan or some WWE, and then they think, look, I'm not full. What else is out there? And they find you guys like me. I've been a TNA fan for since there was a TNA. Um, so the, there's nothing I haven't seen in, in, in Impact as a fan, and, and it's great for me because I, as I get a buzz when I see the company doing well. What's that like on the inside? Now you know you, that excitement is there. Yeah, I mean, you, like you said, that buzz. We feel that buzz. We feel that excitement in the back, like especially you know when there's a lot of hype going into a big event or something. Like you can feel that in the back. We all we're all on that same level where. You know, like I said, we all have that same goal. So if we start getting a buzz, if there's, you know, we feel like we are getting some recognition that we feel like we deserve and we have deserved for a long time. But if people start recognizing it, it's just going to push us more. And that's exactly what it does throughout the whole company, from the locker room to the front office. When we get that little bit of buzz, we feel it and we want to just keep going forward. You know, it's, it's a great thing. You know, uh, we've been putting in work for a long time and we felt that way. And, you know, we felt we've been overlooked for so long and we still are to an extent, of course, but you know, when more eyes get on our product, we feel like we're doing our job and that's mission accomplished. Yeah. One thing you mentioned earlier about some of the marquee matches um, that led to the creation of honor no more with like someone like yourself, who's, you know, like a day one kind of guy who is very much a franchise player of impact, not being one of the people who got the matches against the Kenny Omegas of, of, of AW and people like that. Cause uh, that, this really, really disappointed me because I wanted to see Kenny versus Kenny. And I'm fairly sure you know what I mean. Um, yeah. So, that that would have been a um so that was something I was really looking forward to. Uh would, would that be something you'd like to have a go at one day? Oh yeah, of course. Of course. You know, I I take pride in, in going out there with anybody. You know, Kenny Omega he's he's one of the best there is right now. And you know, at the time when he was our world champion, I would have loved that. And I would love to introduce Kenny to my main man Kenny. That would I would that <laughs> That would be great. That was funny because, like, on my old jacket, I had Kenny on it, and then Kenny Omega wins our world title, and you know, I have Kenny on my jacket. I'm like, I, it's my Kenny guy. It's my, it's my Kenny that's on my jacket. Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say, I, I often felt like the the introduction of Omega almost meant like the other Kenny of him of him that <laughs> wrestling needed to be like pushed to the side. I was a little bit frustrated actually. I remember yeah. Don Callis once saying on commentary, oh, there's Eddie Edwards and Kenny. That's the most notable Kenny in all of professional wrestling. And I was like, <laughs> I like that, Don. Um, but yeah, so that's something I'd still very much like to see, just so we can uh, all say Kenny met Kenny. But anyway, <laughs> that's just me being a bit of a fan. Um, I think, what else have we got to, I've, I've got to ask you, because there's so much. It's you, There's nothing you've not done in Impact. Like uh, there must be, There's a lot of guys in the locker room who must have a checklist of things that they're trying to tick off. 
do you still have one of them or is it just a case of bucket list things now that and you're thinking where what else can you you do from here what what else is for you to achieve there's got to be something you know at this point it's about it's just about testing myself it's about whether it's in the ring you know with with new matchups and new opponents guys that i've never wrestled or if it's just that creative level where you know, me and PCO did a fight in the desert. That's, you know, that's something that does get my creative juices flowing because it's something I've never done before. So it's all about, as long as I keep challenging myself and getting opportunities to do that, I'm going to be happy. I don't necessarily have a bucket list. Sure, there's guys that I want to wrestle that are part of the company or if guys come in, I'd like to wrestle them. But, you know, I go out there, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to wrestle in that ring. That's always what I want to do. That's my love is going in that ring and wrestling. And then I get to try to do new stuff backstage or vignettes or whatever it is. It gets me going. It gets that, like you like we said, that buzz. As long as I have those creative juices going, I'm happy and I will continue to do the best that I can. Hmm. I was going to say, yeah, but thinking back to Kenny, I think Kenny's come back to life more times than PCO. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I probably should have said that earlier. Um, you mentioned a minute ago people you'd still like to wrestle. So either within the company or without, although there's still plenty in the company you could have a really good program with, which I'd, I'd, I'd like to see. Um, I'm trying to think who's uh, Macklin, for example. I don't, have you and Macklin ever had a prolonged program? No, we just had a little singles match, and you know, we did, he did some stuff along with I don't know more, a little tease here and there, but nothing, nothing too in depth. Do you think that could be a good, um, a good rivalry between you and Macklin because you're both similar characters at the same way, but so different at the same time? Yeah, for sure. I think you know, you you do do what he can do, I do what I'll do, and I think we'll create something different. You know, he's he's a psychopath as well, which is fun. We know we can go out there and do some. Uh, do some craziness and, you know, beat the hell out of each other and, and have a good time. That, that's always a fun one. So who else is there on, again, in the locker room or, or outside of the locker room? Because yeah, no, you mentioned Ishii, like who else is on there? Even New Japan's locker room you could, you could bring up. Yeah, you know, for, as far as for Impact, you know, I've never done anything with Saban, you know, a singles mm-hmm. anything. That, you know, a, a program of saving or Shelly, both guys that I, I've never done that. You know, guys like Trey Miguel who have really come into their own again. I've wrestled them before, but to do a prolonged, you know, program or a feud with him would be great. A uh, Chris Bay, you know, guys, uh, Mike Bailey, who I've never wrestled before. I, we have, it's amazing that I've been a part of Impact for so long and there's still a lot of matches that I haven't had happen. So, you know, we talk about bucket list. You know, these are things that I would like to happen at some point. And then you look to New Japan, of course, there's the the mainstays, the the, the main eventers like a Tanahashi or an Okada, you know, a Shingo, anybody like that. Of course, I'd be happy to get in that ring with and, and see what we can do out there. There's just, you know, right now, there's just so many. The, our locker room is absolutely stacked. And, yeah. of course, New Japan is out there killing it right now. So there's no lack of options, which, again, that's a great thing to have. New Japan's a really good example. So thinking of New Japan, with the uh, the awesome relationship, by the way, Impact have with New Japan now, it's so nice to see um, like New Japan working with with, with all of the, the big, uh, except for one, all, all of the, you know, the big Western companies now. It's really awesome to see. Um, so, but do you reckon you could ever go over and take part in the uh, G1 Climax or something like that? That would be awesome. You know, and... I've learned a long time ago in wrestling, you never say never and you never know what's going to happen. But, you know, with the relationship, as you said, the relationship between Impact and New Japan, I'm sure at some point there will be some Impact, you know, wrestlers going over there for a prolonged time. And, you know, I'd be happy to go over there. I've, of course, have a lot of love for for Japan as a whole and for pro wrestling. No, I'm going over there for them. So I'd be happy to do that. And just with the product that New Japan is putting out there, that would be a fun thing. I think for anybody in our locker room, I think there's a list of names that we could choose from to send over to represent Impact, and they would do us proud. Mm. If you want to see, uh, who knows if you got the band back together with Honor No More when it invaded New Japan strong, that'd be funny as well. Uh, yeah. But because uh, I know you got a lot of your guys go over there, and your their guys come over to you, so that it's nice that you've got that relationship. Because uh, I think the fans like that as well. But more importantly, as impact like as, as nice as those relationships are, 
impact doesn't need them so because you guys are doing just great on your own so it's nice that you're elevating other companies and it's particularly the independent guys who who get to wrestle you guys on before the before the impact and and, and stuff like that and really get to show off what they can do because i remember when mike bailey was appearing on um those those shows where now he he's up there as a main eventer and also just going back you mentioned Sabin and shelly a moment ago and that's that's amazing to think that you guys haven't had like a large program or a few because you know they've been in the company a long time as well you know they're impact royalty like yourself um so yeah I'd, I'd, that'd be i think a lot of fans would would pay good money to see an extended program because to you is it about the dream match or is it about the dream series? You know, it's it's tough because that's always a tough question. People, you know, ask about what, a dream matchup or anything like that. Or, you know, as you said, a dream series. For me, it's about the right thing at the right time. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's if we could, if, say, me and Saban, if we could build to this big program and say it's a series of matches, that's something that I would love to do because we could build to it the right way. You know, there's guys, like we said, who I'd like to wrestle, of course, but the dream scenario to me is building it the right way and, and blowing it off at the biggest show we could. You know, if we can do that, I would be very happy to do that with anybody in the locker room with Saban, of course. Awesome. So I think I've got one final question for you, Eddie, and I'll let you get back to your family. So again, WrestleSphere, we were a spin-off of Soundsphere magazine. We we were a culture and a music magazine before we branched out and, and did the wrestling thing. So who is Eddie Edwards outside of the ring? What and it could be movies. I know you're a family man, it but it, so this could be music, movies. What again, who are you out of the ring? I'd love to know a little you bit know, more about that. For me, I of course, you know, family is first and foremost. And, you know, go back to, you know, why I've been with Impact for so long. And again, with how they treated me. And also, you know, I enjoy having my time at home. You know, I'm able to turn, turn it off and be home and be that family man and be that Eddie Edwards that is outside the ring. And, you know, so family first and foremost, I'm a big sports fan. I'm from Boston, Mass. I love all the Boston sports teams. Of course, my Celtics, um, you know, me and the wife, we watch, you know, we do the same thing as most. We binge watch some TV and everything like that. And, you know, it's just about, for me, it's about being in the moment. You know, I like to do a lot of fun stuff with my daughter. You know, we go to trampoline parks, you know, all that stuff, like, that's the fun stuff for me when it's outside of wrestling. You know, wrestling is wrestling's tough. Wrestling takes a lot out of you. And so I like to be able to get home and just have that home life and kind of shut everything else off and just be in that moment. That's very important to me. And I'm able to do that because of Impact Wrestling. Have any, I said the last question, I lied, um, because I thought of another. Have any fictional ca- characters inspired your personas over the years? Or your persona? Because you, yours is one long evolution of a persona, as opposed to yeah. different ones. You know, not necessarily one one character or, or one thing like that. For me, I try to take, you know, whether it's quotes or lines or, or moments from, you know, movies or from TV shows, if there's something that comes across, you know, really cool, it's like, I put that down in my notes. Maybe I can use this at some point. And I try to take it from everything I watch. And I, I remember using like an Mission Impossible line in a, in a quote, in a promo one time. It's just things that click and it's like, Oh, that would be cool to be able to do that. Even if it's the way, you know, something is shot or the way something is lit that I'm watching on TV, it's like, well, that would be a cool look for for a promo or for a vignette or whatever. I think, you know, I think the, the best of us do that. You know, where it's a wrestling is a sickness. You know what I mean? We have that in our blood and in our soul where, you know, as much as I do try to shut it off at home, but it's always within me. So if I'm watching something and something clicks, I go right to my phone and I put it right in the notes and I just have a list of notes that make no sense at this point, probably, but I have them all in my phone. I can go back and look and try to make sense of them at any time. So I just try to take it from, from everyday life and the world in general. Wrestling is a sickness. So that's, what honor no more we're talking about that's <laughs> what they were talking about right now um, see it's all coming together eddie thank you very much i'm conscious i think we've got uh only three minutes left but i but i think i've asked you uh everything I, I set out to ask you so so thank you very much uh and i'll let you get home um take care and best of luck at sacrifice as well looking forward to watching that thank- the weekend 
Thank you, man. Thank you for doing this and, you know, supporting Impact and everything. We appreciate it and uh, keep spreading the word, man. Thank you. Mate, I've got the sickness too. What do you think I do this for a job? <laughs> uh, I've got it as well. It's, I can't, I've had it since Hulk Hogan's days. I can't get rid of it. I've tried.